Few would dispute that the Wahoo Kicker set a pretty high bar in the world of direct drive smart trainers. It offered users an unmatched level of realism for indoor training. Well, Wahoo has launched a new version, which it says has brought even more of that real world feel to your indoor training with some key new features and updates. So let's take a closer look. You can be my champion. What might be immediately apparent is that the new Wahoo Kicker doesn't look that different visually from the old one. In fact, I'd say pretty much identical. The changes are definitely subtle. But actually, I'd almost say I'm, I'm pleased to see uh, that in some regards because I extensively tested the previous model of the Kicker and one of the things I praised it for was that it's really sturdy and kind of industrial feeling construction with no flimsy plasticky parts. So I'm happy that Wahoo has kind of left the, the basics alone to a greater extent. If you want to read that review, incidentally, the link to that will pop up on the screen. So before we look at the new stuff, let's have a look at some of the things that haven't changed. Firstly, the fact that the kicker will measure up to 2,200 watts of power. So that's plenty for even the fastest sprinters on earth and definitely more than enough for my little legs. The flywheel weight is 7.25 kilograms, which helps with that realistic ride feel when it comes to pedaling. And another thing Wahoo does is supply all its kickers with an 11 speed cassette already fitted. So it's good to go straight out of the box. The eagle eyed amongst you will notice that this is actually a 12 speed cassette though that I've, uh, I've stuck on for because of the bike that I'm going to use to test this particular product. But that's also a useful talking point. Now it is 12 speed compatible obviously and that's a simple change with the XDR driver body adapter. So about a five minute job to switch that over. In terms of the new stuff, key to the internals of this, the sort of firmware if you like, is that it's now plus or minus 1% power accuracy. Now that actually stands Wahoo really sort of in the, the top level of, of accuracy in terms of power measurement. There are very few other products on the market that can boast that level of accuracy. Um, and before the, the previous uh, kicker was actually plus or minus 2%, so a, a significant step forward there. The other features that are new are the feet, uh, what Wahoo calls the axis feet. I'm gonna come back to that because the best way for me to demonstrate those is actually to jump on and ride it. But before I get on and ride, I wanna run through some of the setup steps. As per previous versions, all the various inserts to be compatible with the current axle standards for mounting the bike through axles and standard quick release are included, plus disc brake spacers if you're running a disc brake bike just to make sure you don't have issues pulling the brakes while the bike is mounted on the trailer. As you can see, that took me just a couple of minutes to get everything all mounted up and good to roll. The main purpose of the new axis feet is to enhance your riding experience adding more realism to your ride by allowing a natural movement of the bike as you pedal. Both in and out of the saddle, the bike is able to tilt up to five degrees in all directions. They are rider weight adjustable, so there are three settings. Wahoo recommends for the first setting up to 63 kilos. Obviously that's the most supple. The mid setting 63 to 81 kilos, and then the firmest setting is for riders 81 kilos and above. But that's not set in stone. Just like choosing your tire pressures for your own bike in the real world, you might well find that you prefer to run the kicker on one of the softer settings if you just want that extra sort of comfort and freedom to move. The feet are also height adjustable so you can level the kicker on an uneven surface. Plus Wahoo says they will help to make the new kicker more silent running than before. A really useful feature of the new kicker is its auto calibration function. That basically means no more of those annoying spin downs that you have to do before every session to calibrate the unit. It's just gonna do that the whole time while you're riding and take care of that calibration for you without you even noticing. And that, as product manager Tyler Harris tells me, is a big part of actually the accuracy of this new version. So helping it to be that plus or minus 1% because it's constantly monitoring the calibration and making sure it's as accurate as it can be. The kicker climb is able to mimic up to a 20% incline and a 10% descent, while the headwind can replicate up to a 30 mile an hour wind. You could be forgiven for thinking like accessories such as this are gimmicky add-ons, but whilst I definitely agree that you could still train effectively without them, they do actually do more than just put on a good show. After all, cycling is a very fluid and dynamic sport, so why would you want to be fixed rigidly in a trainer? Beyond the sense of realism in the experience, there's also the sense of realism to the way your muscles are working as your body position subtly changes when the bike tilts on a climb or descent. So you're actually training in a more specific way to the real life demands. So there's a first look at the new Wahoo Kicker. 
And from my first impressions, I think I could immediately feel the difference that the Axis feet had made to that overall ride feel, certainly bringing a bit more of a natural and refined feel to it. And I think as well, comfort, you know, especially if you're the type of person that's inclined to do long turbo sessions, then that little bit of extra comfort and vibration absorption is gonna be a definite plus. And also if you live in a flat, then the noise reduction could also be useful too. Good news is the feet will be available as an aftermarket product. So if you already own a kicker, you'll be able to get those and upgrade your existing unit. Also good news is the price hasn't gone up. Wahoo is gonna keep this kicker at 999.99 in the UK. Obviously, I've only just got my hands on this, so I'm gonna be spending some time over the coming weeks getting to grips with it and uh, giving it a bit more evaluation. So look out for my in-depth review on cyclist.co.uk. If you've got any comments on this video, please leave them below. And if you're enjoying our content, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe on the button at the end of the video. And also click the bell icon if you wanna be notified every time we upload new content.